What if I told you that by washing your laundry, you could be killing farmland? Or that your car's rubber tires could be causing people to starve? These days, we're frequently hearing about how microplastics are saturating our oceans, our land, maybe even our bodies. Ugh. It gets worse. These microplastics can break down into even smaller nanoplastics, small enough to affect things at the cellular level, like bacteria. Now we can imagine what a microplastic might look like, small bits of sand or dust, but what would a nanoplastic look like and how might it be affecting the world around us? Hmm. Nanoplastics are so small, we can't see them with something like a traditional microscope here. But we can find an answer to our question by using something called an atomic force microscope, or an AFM for short. Seeing something at the atomic scale is a big challenge, so why don't we just build some type of super microscope? Traditional microscopes work by focusing light, but at a certain level of tininess, things are so small that light, which your eyes can see, can't resolve an image. Okay, so we can't see nanoplastics with the naked eye, but what if we could feel them? And if we could, how accurate of an image can you create of something by just touching it? An AFM works by using a tiny needle to feel a surface, but at an atomic level. Almost like how an old record player uses a needle to feel little bumps and turn those into sound. Or how a visually impaired person might read braille with their fingertips. Luckily, we have access to an AFM here at the University of Toronto. And with this tool, we're gonna be able to see that when it comes to small plastics, nano is a big no-no. I'm sorry, I'm a scientist, not a comedian. Now, before we get our hands on the real thing, I wanted to have some fun with this concept. So I brought a few friends together to see how well we could actually make images of objects based entirely on feel. Now, it's not exactly scientific, but uh, it'll certainly be fun. Nice. All right, Christina, here is your first object. Make sure it's only the index finger. Okay, and I want you to draw a picture of what you thought that you just felt. This is object number two. There you go. I don't know what this is. <laughs> Feels like glass. Now it is time for the third object. Okay. Time for the final object, object number four. It's squishy. <laughs> what are you feeling right now? Pretty squishy. Squishiness is something that we call elasticity, which is something that an AFM can measure. Draw it as best as you can. You know, I thought these would be much worse than they actually are. So great job. <laughs> when studying science, try to find a way to have fun with your friends. What's important isn't creating a perfectly accurate representation, but creating a positive association with learning. Now we uh, high five to get in, so why don't we get uh, one high five out? Oh. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> my bad. I was like this, and you were like, uh, uh. Oh, <laughs> oh, there you go. Let's try and do this. <laughs> yeah, nice work. All right, thanks so much for coming, everybody. So, how is knowing an object's elasticity useful? Well, one example is researchers have been able to use AFM to measure the elastic response of human cancer cells. Then they can see how those cells soften and harden when moving around or reproducing. And this has had many useful applications. But what does elasticity have to do with nanoplastics? Well, it's not exactly the nanoplastics that we're interested in, but it's how it interacts with bacteria. We're gonna meet my friend, Professor Ruby Sulien. She operates an atomic force microscope here at the University of Toronto in the Department of Chemistry. Hi, Ruby. Nice to meet you. Some of the work that you can do to actually really study what these nanoplastics do. So as you could imagine, because of the size of the nanoplastic, they could actually cross the biological membrane and imagine what it could do to many different biological organisms, not only in aquatic, like marine um, organisms, but also organisms that reside in the soil. So for what we do, we are mostly looking at the terrestrial organism. Do you know what they say that seeing is believing? Mm -hmm. I believe feeling is believing, is seeing. And AF, oh, is it the other way around? <laughs> I believe feeling is seeing, is believing. And AFM can do that fantastically. So here is the AFM, but here is where I would let you see all the cool stuff. See these guys here? They are your nanoplastics. I'd like you to look at the scale bar. That's really small. It is really small. And here are your bacteria. 
no nanoplastics that are overwhelming them, but see what happens when nanoplastics are interacting with your bacteria. They're literally littering the surface. You can actually look at the 3D projection of your image and you have a better picture of how things are interacting. So now let's gonna do an actual imaging of our nanoplastics on bacteria. And this will take about seven minutes. So what are we looking at here right now? Is so, this the needle going across the same? Correct. Way? Yeah, and it does so in a very, I would say, systematic fashion. So we call it raster scanning. What motivated us to actually look into nanoplastic bacteria interaction is there is currently a global shift toward um, the use of microbial biofertilizer. And for us to be able to design those microbial fertilizers more effectively, we've got to understand how is the soil environment impacting the chemistry and the biology of the bacteria that are inhabiting the soil. And what actually we are looking at is which of these bacteria are more resilient to the effect of nanoplastics. And those bacteria that are more resilient, I would say they are better candidates as microbial biofertilizers. And we can't forget about elasticity. Remember, squishiness is something that only an AFM can measure. Ruby explained to me that when they're imaging bacteria, they get a reading for how firm the cells are in their natural state, and then how firm they are when they're saturated with nanoplastics. By noting the differences between healthy squishy and sick squishy, they're able to gauge how much exposure to nanoplastics is too much. This then helps them figure out which types of microbial fertilizers to use in nanoplastic polluted agricultural land. Thank you so much, Ruby. I feel like I've learned a lot, especially when it comes to how much care and how meticulous it really needs to be to do this research, and especially with such an important issue like food security. My pleasure is. Thank you for visiting. And there you have it, a closer look at the nanoverse, and hopefully a better appreciation of why it's important to minimize single-use plastics. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, check out our YouTube channel where we have dozens of awesome experiments you can do at home. As for me, I'm going to come up with a list of other cool things I could look at under an AFM. I wonder what my hair would look like. I wonder what a fruit fly would look like. I wonder what benzene would look like. I wonder what my hair would look like.